apologies. So, um, what does science mean to you? Seems like a pretty straightforward, pretty simple question. It's actually not. It's a question we ask Canadian youth. And the 10-year-old girl behind me who drew this picture, for her, science is the magical creature that paints the changing sky every night. And that's very powerful. And it was that question that guided the creation of a national science-inspired art exhibit in Canada. And I'm proud to say that although the topic was general science, about 80% was from astronomy. So I'm kind of cheer for that. And what started off as a national project, with the help of a few new friends, quickly became an international project. And that's the spirit I want to talk to you today. These are actually images from South Africa. What's beautiful here is the girl's caption. She's a great one student, and she said, this is me going with my dad in my spaceship to, to school. What a beautiful future that could be. We also received artwork from uh, Portugal, and not just the mainland of Portugal, but also from the Azores, with a, a beautiful illustration of a craft, a handmade quadrant. And this image here on the right is very interesting. It, the caption was the river of life. I don't know what the child meant by that, but what I like to see through my astronomical goggles is a star at the center with a belt that illustrates the habitable zone. So maybe I think we're too much. And this, of course, is the Deadly Moons Project. Deirdre gave me about 50 beautiful illustrations that she had done from 10 different kind of sites, also from uh, Chinese Irish students, and we could have done an entire exhibit probably with just your art, which is incredible. Um, now, I don't want to make the assumption that this is just for kids, so shamelessly, this was my own contribution. Um, it's the Plaskett Observatory, where I work and pretty much where I live, and uh, it's obviously star trails. This used to be the biggest telescope on the planet Earth, 100 years ago, or six months. <laughs> And the point of this exhibit was to draw awareness and sharing. And to do that, you need to have more than just static images. Uh, I created a whole set of interactive Google Maps. So anyone who participated, any classroom, school, individual, or country, we actually created their locations on a map that's viewable to anyone. And that was the first step of something that we're going to do. So this is just the first phase. These maps are interactive, so you can dig a little deeper. If you click on any of those bubbles, you're going to actually see images and captions that explain art. For the contributions I got from overseas, I went a step further, I actually make videos of all the art you sent. So you click on it, it's a little video that pops up. The next step will be sharing the artwork and we're gonna have basically a whole bunch of lines connecting. We're gonna create a web of interaction. We also have a static website that we use. There should be a video playing, there it is. Time-lapse video. We did a physical gallery, so this is myself and my team at the AAAS. We set up the artwork in a crash course. We have about four hours. Uh, it should be blank, that's okay. We had about four hours, about six and a half thousand people came through and saw this in two days. And we've already had about 100 email follow-ups from this. When we looked at the art a little closer, some incredible things came out. Uh, this is from a girl who's new to Canada. She goes to the El Azara Islamic Academy. And this is a very typical image of an American flag planted on the moon. The caption, powerful. This is the first female astronaut on the moon. Something that you wouldn't have seen in the picture. This is from a university student at the prestigious Emily Carr Art School, and it's something we want to try to do in science centers. He took different liquids and different dyes and tried to recreate spiral galaxies. And he didn't just do two-dimensional, he tried three-dimensional. Did it work? Well, you'll have to talk to me after and I'll tell you. Canada has a very rich Aboriginal culture, and I'm very proud to say this is a beyond IYA legacy item right here. So this came from the far bottom right part of Canada, a park called Cape Breton. And it's actually an illustration of their story of moon, what we would call the, the kind of Big Dipper. And it's basically a bunch of birds chasing a bear. And this was Aboriginal stories and artwork that was preserved. Uh, as I came here, I was just completing another project with the First Nations where I live, which is the bottom left part of Canada on the other side. And it's using astronomy and art to help preserve and restore their native language, which is lost. It's only spoken by about 10 people, believe it or not. It's called St. Chaucer. I doubt no one's heard of it. So what comes next? Well, that's where things get ambitious. Uh, I didn't just bring this artwork here uh, to show everyone it's beautiful. I'm glad people are taking pictures. I'm hoping to leave this here. I'm hoping this can go into a school here. I'm hoping the kids here can then take that art, create art, and send art to someone else. If anyone wants the art, you don't need to take pictures, let me know, I will send it to you. In Canada, we're going to be continuing this. We've had over a thousand pieces so far. This is uh, Science World, it's on the far right side. It 
gets 50,000 visitors during the summer, and they're going to be setting up a display with tables where kids can draw and contribute art. So the plan is to grow a global network and to share it. And I kind of cheated a little bit here with my last slides, because Mool said 20 slides, 20 seconds, so it's okay. Um, one of the schools did this very interesting picture. It's a snapshot of the Earth from space. Now, almost all the kids in Canada drew it, so you can see Canada. One child who is a recent arrival to Canada drew it different. And I thought that was very powerful, very interesting, how we do that. And with every exhibit, you have to have some great pieces, some paintings, so I brought some canvases, some Mona Lisa's, uh, some kind of uh, Van Gogh's, things like that, that you're gonna get. And what I'd like to do actually is I'd like to take this canvas and I'd like to send it around the world. So I brought a canvas here, I brought some paints, some paint brushes, and I brought a little supposedly indestructible video camera. Um, so I paid for this with my own money, so I'd love to get it back. Um, but what I'd like to do is divide this canvas up like a chessboard and send it to your various countries and have you take it to kids and have those kids paint their version of the earth from space. And we videotape it and we create a video of that. So the end result will be a beautiful canvas that can be displayed, we'll display first in Canada. I'd love to send it back out to your countries. And it will be a journey that the kids can watch through the video. And the kids can learn a little bit about each other's perceptions and cultures. And that's all I gotta say in a nutshell. Thank you very much for your time.